It was author and educator Charles R. Swindle who said life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Therefore, as best as we can, let's be persistent and make that 90% count by turning the negatives and challenges into positives and triumphs. Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. Over the next 30 minutes, you will see some of the plans to boost the resources of the security forces to aid the fight against crime. Stay with us. It keeps our bodies working. Our food nutritious, our living and working spaces clean and our lives comfortable. Water the most precious resource necessary for the sustenance of life on our planet. Don't waste it. Let's conserve on this critical commodity. In the house, invest in storage containers and buckets. Take quick showers instead of long baths and invest in water-efficient shower heads, toilets and faucets. You may also want to consider one-pot meals and cooking methods that don't require much water. You could also wash fruits and vegetables in a bowl and reuse the water on your plants or grass. When cleaning dishes, fill both sinks and use one for washing and the other for rinsing. The leftover water can be used to wash off the concrete or asphalt in your yard. If you must wash your car at home, aim for once a fortnight and use a bucket to do the washing instead of running the hose. Don't delay. Start your water conservation practices today. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry and this is your GIS News for Thursday, June 20. The late former Prime Minister Edward Siaga was yesterday remembered for giving unyielding and sterling service to Jamaica in and outside the Parliament of the country. Nineteen members of the Senate and House of Representatives, along with two former Prime Ministers, paid tribute to Mr. Siaga in a special joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament. The tributes were led by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who remarked that Edward Siaga was one of the fathers of the nation. He was central in the campaign to leave the Federation. He was a framer of our Constitution, and he did tremendous work in advancing legislation to create the Charter of Rights. He shaped our banking sector and financial sector, our urban development, our trading and education system, our tourism and agriculture. In fact, there is scarcely any area of national life that he did not either initiate, shape, or advance in some way. Edward Siaga spared nothing in giving himself entirely to the people he represented. He never shirked in the task of building Jamaica, the land where he belonged and to which he devoted his whole life. He has left an enormous legacy on which all of us, from whatever calling, from whichever side of the aisle, all of us must continue to build. Our national landscape will miss the strength of conviction and the willingness to engage that was typical of Edward Philip George Siago. Edward Siaga was Jamaica's fifth Prime Minister, serving from 1980 to 1989. He represented the constituency of West Kingston from 1962 until his retirement from active politics in 2005. The former statesman passed away on May 28 at age 89. A state funeral has been planned for noon on Sunday, June 23 at the Cathedral of the Most Holy Trinity, after which Mr. Siaga will be interred at the National Heroes Park. Several traffic changes have been instituted for Kingston to accommodate the state funeral of former Prime Minister Edward Siaga. 
South Camp Road and East Queen Street and all roads leading on will be closed to regular vehicular traffic from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. This corridor will be used exclusively by VIPs and other mourners attending and leaving the funeral. Persons traveling East Queen Street or Victoria Avenue from the direction of the sea and intending to use South Camp Road will not be allowed to do so. Meanwhile, North Street between South Camp Road and Church Street and all roads leading on will be closed to vehicular traffic. Access will only be given to motorists attending the funeral. East Street will be closed between North Street and South Hero Circle and all roads leading on. The authorities have also advised that Duke Street between Charles Street and South Hero Circle and all roads leading on will be closed to vehicular traffic. This corridor is designated as the continuation of the official route for the funeral procession from the church to the south gate of Heroes Park. Morasco Road between Caledonia Road and Duke Street at South Heroes Circle will be used to shuttle mourners from National Heroes Park to the church and so will be closed to regular vehicular traffic. Shuttle buses will be pre-positioned at the National Heroes Park to transport mourners between there and the church who bear yellow, black and white stickers. In other news, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, has secured a partnership that will give farmers access to up to $350,000 in loans. RADA signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Tuesday with the Community and Workers of Jamaica Cooperative Credit Union Limited, CNWJ. It makes provision for the farmers to take up loans with interest rates ranging from 20 to 32% per annum on the reducing balance. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw says it seeks to provide farmers with the opportunity to expand production and productivity. It should also give them economic space to employ climate-smart practices, advance packaging for marketing of their produce, and maintain standards, quality, and reliable yield for their farms. These loans must not be treated in any flippant way. They must be treated with great responsibility, right? And... Uh, we have to use the opportunity as well, especially through RADA and our own incentive program, to try to get technology into the hands of our, of our farmers as quickly as possible. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says plans are in place to establish health centers of excellence at the University of the West Indies to focus on cardio care, neurology and mental illness. Following this, he says, will be the establishment of clinics for cancer and kidney failure in Kingston and Montego Bay, for which equipment are being procured. On the curative side, quickly, we're promoting five centers of excellence in Jamaica that we feel are important to deal with the crisis that we face on the NCD front. Uh, the major cause of death, uh, cancer, renal failure, uh, as I said, cardiovascular disease, mental illness, major debilitating process, disease. So what we've basically done and are doing is developing oncology and nephrology. The minister was speaking at this week's 8th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference. He appealed to the diaspora to invest in the local health sector, pointing out that there were numerous investment opportunities ready for take-up. And finally, over 80 million US dollars has been spent to renovate the Zion Hill Primary School in Manchester under the Japanese government's grant assistance for grassroots human security project. In collaboration with the National Education Trust, students and teachers of the institution are enjoying a reconstructed ICT room, playing field, a paved driveway, perimeter fencing and drainage system. The children here at Zion Hill with the new ICT lab and their play field will be able to access quality education, quality learning opportunities. And so it is imperative that we embrace the, the gifts that have been given to the school and allow our children to benefit. The children, of course, are our future. And to secure that future, we must ensure that we provide quality learning opportunities. Japanese Ambassador Hiromasa Yamazaki says the project aims to empower Jamaicans to achieve sustainable development. From today onwards, tangible support is being provided for every young boy and girl 
who come to uh, this noble institution of learning daily. By extension, everyone in the community will also benefit, especially from the use of the ICT room to foster uh, their con continued learning and empowerment of Endeavor. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Too much killing, so much blood spilling, the people can't take it no more. What are the leaders doing? The system is in ruin, people ain't feeling secure. Bless the love, well this is Warrior King, and right now, me appeal to all the youths them, the crime and violence make no sense. Killing an innocent brother and sister, it only send it to the morgue or to the prison. So let's all live in peace and love and unity, okay? A gang is a dead end. Bless the love. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Over $5 billion is being spent this financial year on key areas to combat crime and strengthen the capacity of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force. With the details is National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chan. The Ministry of National Security is pursuing several strategies to combat crime, strengthen the capacity of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and ensure peace and safety for all. Over $5 billion is being spent on key areas in the 2019-2020 financial year. Sixty is your mark for significant repair this year, and there will be several rebuilding. The Ministry is partnering with two key agencies to carry out this mission. The National Housing Trust is contributing $2 billion towards the construction of 10 police stations. The Jamaica Social Investment Fund is giving another $1 billion for the rebuilding and renovation of seven police stations. All stations will be redesigned to look like modern office spaces. Police stations will be equipped with their appropriate reception areas. The government is also building a new multifaceted police headquarters in West Kingston downtown. It will be constructed on a 40-acre property known as No Man's Land. Design work has started, we have had our architect in place and the contract signed for design and development which we are going through now. Working ground will take some time, I don't expect we'll have a groundbreaking until the end of the financial year or early in the next financial year. The facility will accommodate over 2,500 police officers and house all non-geographic formations of specialized units such as Narcotics, National Intelligence Bureau and CTOC among others. This will represent the transformative approach the government, this government is taking to building the new Jamaica. Mr. Speaker, no man's land, it is sometimes called, will be a beacon of hope in our city and will elevate the space to represent hope, peace and prosperity. Meanwhile, a mobile West Patrol post is to be constructed in Montego Bay to accommodate 400 officers. This government undertakes this, therefore undertakes significant projects as an investment to secure the peace and safety of our future generation. The Ministry of National Security is strengthening its technology-based governance structure with the implementation of advanced systems. On the agenda is the retooling of the telecommunications system of the entire JCF. Over $600 million will be spent this financial year. We'll cover the island and we will ensure that the police officers have quality communication, both mobile and fixed. In addition to that, the force will receive $530 million of advanced technology equipment, a significant upgrade to its enterprise resource management system to improve the management of records, vehicles, facilities and cases, and the Big Book or Station Diary replaced with an electronic station records management system. The Jamaica Eye program will become fully active in September, with approximately 1,000 camera feeds being monitored. It will have the requisite monitoring system to collect and store high-quality footage that can be used as evidence in our courts. This investment in Jamaica will give the police the appropriate counter strategy to intercept, curtail and curtail the movements of criminal gang members the dons and their facilitators across Jamaica. Still on technology, the turnaround time for pathology tests in criminal cases will become shorter. Construction of a new state-run autopsy suite is expected to begin in June. This will enable quick closure of investigations and bring criminals to justice in less time. 
the National Security Ministry will also be expanding the Institute of Forensic Science and Legal Medicine. With the investment of some 200 million into this agency, we will see an increased use of DNA, biological evidence, ballistics, and a full suite of scientific protocols in our fight against crime. Being able to respond to the call of duty is critical to the efficient functioning of the JCF. As such, the government will be spending $1 billion to add more vehicles to the fleet this year. These include 400 motor vehicles and 60 bikes. This will ensure that the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch will have satisfactory mobility and the entire force will have adequate mobile capacity to, among other things, challenge the criminal gangs and dance anywhere, anytime. The mobile reserve will be restructured and placed in a position to be more effective and to respond to the many hotspots across the island more effectively. And that's not all. Major General Anthony Anderson and his team will reorganize and remission the Inspectorate of Constabulary to rebrand it as the professional standard branch of the police force. Meanwhile, the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, CTOC, will have a special subgroup to deal with anti-gang interventions, among other things. On the matter of beefing up manpower, 1,000 new policemen and women are to be trained this year. Officers, especially those operating in crowded public spaces, will be outfitted with less lethal tools. Body cameras will be used to monitor police activities, as well as provide support and insight concerning police behavior in high-pressure situations. Funds are being made available to ensure too that police have requisite equipment to meet the demands of their tasks. Proper helmets for those who require them. Yes. Up-to-date ballistic vests. Yes. Mr. For all police. Yes. The strengthening of laws takes high priority for the Ministry of National Security to optimize the operation of the JCF. Among the bills on the docket this legislative year are the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Agency MOCA Act, Proceeds of Crime Act, Firearms Act, Immigration Restriction Commonwealth Citizens Act, and the Aliens Act. The review of the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organized Act, more popularly referred to as the anti-gang legislation, is underway and will continue with urgency. The ministry is also serious about securing our borders from illegal transnational activities. Funds have been set aside for an additional surveillance aircraft, as well as to purchase advanced technology equipment. The Maritime Air and Cyber Command will continue to receive support to build out its operational capabilities, as they play a critical role in combat the gangs, the transnational criminal activity, and the emerging criminal threats, and protect our blue economy as a small island state. And to wrap up the strategic priorities, the National Security Ministry will continue to implement measures under its Crime Reduction Through Social Intervention Program, targeting youth and volatile communities. Securing our peace and safety is the objective of the Ministry of National Security. We will secure and defend the peace of our people and play our part in creating the foundation for sustainable development for the new Jamaica. It wasn't always about the seriousness of running a country and implementing policies, programs and institutions to strengthen development. For the late former Prime Minister, the Most Honourable Edward Siaga, sometimes it was just taking time out to enjoy the lighter side of life. <music> We have looked at Edward Siaga, the legislator, the anthropologist, the social reformer, the politician and scholar, but what of the Edward Siaga, the family man? You have three children with your first wife, Mitzi, two sons, Christopher and Andrew, and a daughter, Annabelle. And you have another daughter, Gabrielle, with your second wife, your current wife, Carlo. Now, I wanted to ask, because I've heard it, but I'm not sure, I've never read it, is your first son, Christopher adopted? Yes. He is an adopted child. But we don't repeat that word. We don't talk about it that way. As far as we are concerned, Christopher is a son. Mm -hmm. And there he is right behind you. Yeah. Now, um, your first wife 
Elizabeth, Mitzi Constantine, described you as shy. She Pardon? also had, she described you as shy. Shy, yes. Right. And she also had this to say about you. He is bright. Yes. Um, he's, there's a gentle side to Edward Siago. Gently. Really? Yes. Yes. Um, the tyrant that the, the, the people portray him as, I don't know that person. I don't know the tyrant yes. at all, no. I don't know. I know a man that's impatient, that he likes to get things done. He is creative. Uh -huh. He has foresight and he's, he's bright. And he doesn't have patience with people that are, nice. that give excuses, you know. He doesn't yeah. understand that I, I can't or it can't be done. He's a man that I respect. You uh, still respect? I, of course I do, yes. 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 He's yeah. the father of my children. He, he is an honest man, very honest. I think that's what I respect about him most of all, is honesty. I remember once he told me that the most dishonest thing that he ever did was in the 70s when they had, um, they had um, <laughs> abandoned bird, bird shooting. Bird shooting. <laughs> and he went out and stole a shoot one Sunday <laughs> and he felt so bad about it and he said, I said, Eddie, this must be the most dishonest. He said, yes, it is. He felt terrible, but yes, he yes. just, you know, he just <laughs> loves bird shooting, and that's the one <laughs> thing that really relaxes him. And yes. I thought that he was going to go crazy. And there were a bunch of fellas that were going out yes. to Portland, and they said, come, Eddie, man. You're passionate about bird shooting, but it's not only about bird shooting. I'm told you're passionate about gardening as well. Uh, yes, gardening uh, and landscaping. Uh, yeah, there's that side of me that very few people know about. Matter of fact, I've given up bird shooting. Although it's been in the family from I was a little child and before, uh -huh. um, I, I something happened. I, I shot a bird and uh, the fellow who was with me went to pick it up, and he put it down beside me, and the bird wasn't dead, and I noticed that it still had a wing like that, going like that, lying on its side, and it looked up at me. Why did you shoot me? What have I done you? I took my gun, I broke it, put it away, and I've had a shot since then. Is that when you became involved in gardening, or gardening was always something you liked to do? No. I love beautiful things. I love beautiful flowers, beautiful women. <laughs> um, not to say you don't like other types of things, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a premium, and I love art because it is beautiful. I love the majesty of sports because there are the beautiful stroke play of a good game of cricket, and then there's the wham bam hitting the ball out of the park. That's not a good cricket stroke, but it gives excitement. You have to appreciate all these things. And I love them all. Your current wife, Carla, speaks about your level of commitment and to the caliber of the person that you are. We, we have a quick bag from her here that I'd like you to look at. He's very goal-oriented. A lot of people think they're successful because they're busy with activities. He makes sure that he knows where he wants to go and that he's actually getting there. It's not just a matter of being busy. You have to achieve the goal. That's a big strength. That is true. I set my targets and I set my agenda. People see me carry around a little black book. Sometimes I use a cell phone to do it. I'm always making notes of what is to be done. And that's how you get things done. You can't expect the brain to carry everything. <laughs> Let's continue the story now, but this time in West Kingston, as the people speak openly of their relationship with Mr. Siaga. a father to us all in Denham Town and Tivoli Gardens here. This is one of our most saddest times in Western Kingston. 
Mr. Siaga is my mentor. I don't know when I'm going to overcome his death because he's a person, you could, have, you could have called him any hours at the night, he will always be here. He's a person you could have related anything to, any problem. Mr. Eddie play a vital role in my life. Yes, and him tell me one thing, always learn to rise. We can get over Papa Eddie, me ready. I'm going to make me care here before I sit down in one place, get work put me in, and I can work and get pension and live off of it. And I can sit and eat my food daily. So I must remember that man. He do a lot for me. He is a cemetery to see here. A lot him do. I can't tell you. They got done. I can't talk. They have more things that I got to finish. I'm still running up pay for that house I live in before it's too late. I run pay for my house as I have to go to the world now. So I love him to my heart, soul and body. I cry for him dead till right now. Well, I really feel it for him was a very good man here. As he built up here, he always help people. Never eat up to help you and assist you with anything you go to him about. He was very good and nice. You never will get a man to come up here like him. So we all miss him, miss him very much. The school brought the children here today because as member of parliament, Mr. Siaga played an integral part in supporting the activities of the school. There would have not been a graduation or a prize given where he didn't contribute and be present if it was possible. I see Mr. Siaga as one of my mentors. You understand, and uh, you know when I heard of his passing, trust me, it left something within me, negatively. I want Jamaicans to remember Mr. Siaga as a very prolific speaker. Trust me, when he speak to you, you know, he, he melts your heart, you understand. He was that type of leader that, no nonsense, he was a very serious man as well. So I want Jamaicans to remember Mr. Siaga as a nation builder and remember his positive influence to developing modern Jamaica. You understand? And just leave the negative out. We should not remember this man for this sad occasion that he had died, but rather the life that he has lived was one filled with joy and perspective because, you know, sit is a man that came and sat with people on the sidewalk. If it wasn't for Mr. Siaga, many of us here would not be here. So he was an agent of change, so I too can go there and be an agent of change because of this man's exemplary life. He was encouraging me to pursue what I want when I said to them I want to become the next counselor for Denham Town or something as it regards to active politics and I have spoken to him in that sense and he said that I should aim towards it. So I'm doing my best in terms of that. As we close today's show, we ask that you stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service the voice of Jamaica.